Oh, hello, great readers. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nimikum. I'm Van Chen. In this class, I'll read all of you a part of Wobby Dick War the Will. Yes. Ah. Oh. Moby Dick or the Whale Herman Melville Chapter 18 His Mark As we were walking down the end of the wharf towards the ship Queek carrying his harpoon Captain Pilligan his gruff voice lolly hailed us from his gram Saying he had not suspected my friend was a cannibal And furthermore announcing that he let no cannibals on board that craft Unless they previously produced their papers. What do you mean by that? Captain Plug, said I. Now jumping on the bulwarks. And leaving my comrades standing on the wharf. I mean. He replied. He must show his papers. This, said Captain Bildad in his hollow voice, sticking his head from behind Pelix, out of the wigwam. He must show that he's converted. Son of darkness, he added, turning to Quikuk. Art thou our present in communion with any Christian church? When said I, he's a member of the First Congregational Church, he be it said. That many tattooed savages sailing in Antarctic ships at last come to be converted into the churches. First Congregational Church, cried Bildad. What? That worships in Deacon Jeter in a me commons meeting house. And so saying, taking out his spectacles, he rubbed them with his great yellow band on a handkerchief and putting them on very carefully, came out of the wigwam and leaning stiffly over the bulwarks, took a good long look at Queek. How long had he been a member? He then said, Turning to me. Not very long. I rather guess. Oh man. No. Said Pilek. And he hasn't been baptized right either. Where it would have washed some of that devil's blue off his face. Dude. And cried Bilded. Is this Philistine a regular member of Deacon Deuteronomy's meeting? I never saw him going there. And I passed it every Lord's Day. I don't know anything about Deacon Deuteronomy or his meeting, said I. All I know is. That quick care is a born member of the First Congregational Church. He is a deacon himself. Quick biz. Young <laughs> man. Said Budget sternly. Thou art sclerking with me, explain thyself. Thou young Hittite. What church dost thee mean? for me. <laughs> Finding myself this hard pushed, I replied. I mean, the, the same ancient Catholic church to which you and I, and Copting Plague there, and Quig here, and all of us, and every mother's son and soul of us belong. 
the great and everlasting first congregation of this whole worshipping world. We all belong to that. Only some of us cherish some queer crotchets no ways to change the ground belief. In that we all join hands. Spoith. Thou means splice hands. Cried Pillock. Drawing Nero. Young man. You'd better ship for a missionary. Instead of a mast end. I never heard a better sermon. Deacon Jitter and my wife of the maple himself can beat it. And he's recording something. Come aboard. Come aboard. Never mind about the papers. I see. Tolko hog through what's that you call him? Tolko hog to step along. By the great anchor. What a harpoon he's got there. Looks like good stuff that. And he handles it about right. I see. Quagged. Or whatever your name is. Did you ever stand in the head of a whale boat? Did you ever strike a fish? Without saying a word. Quigui. In his wild sort of way. Jumped upon the bulwarks. From thence into the bows of one of the whale boats heading to the side. And then bracing his left knee. And poising his harpoon. Cried out in some such way as this. Happy ain't. You see him small drop to on water dear. You see him? Well, suppose him one will I. Well, then, and taking sharp aim at it, he darted the iron right over old Bulldad's broad brim, fling across the ship's decks, and struck the glistening to a spot out of sight. And, said Quick, quietly hauling in the line. Spozy him willy I. Oi. That well did. Kish. Build it. Said Pelek. His partner. Two. Aghast at the close vicinity of the flying harpoon. Had retreated towards the cabin gangway. Kish. I see. You build it. And get the ship's papers. We must have hedgehog there. I mean quahogs. In one of our boats. Thuggy. Quahogged. We'll give you the 90th lay. And that's more than ever was giving a harpooner yet out of Nantucket. So down we went into the cabin. And to my great Jaquique was in enrolled among the same ship's company to which I myself belonged. When all preliminaries were over and Pillock had got everything ready for signing, he turned to me and said, I guess. Quahog there don't know how to write. Does he? I see. Quahogged. Blasty. Dost thou sign thy name or make thy mark? 
which had this question. Who had twice with Christ before taking part in similar ceremonies? Book no ways abashed. But taking the offered pen, cop it upon the paper, in the proper place, an exact counterpart of a queer round figure which was tattooed upon his arm. So that through kept in Pilek's obstinate mistake touching his appellative. It stood something like this. Quag. His ex-mark. Meanwhile, Captain Bildad sat earnestly and steadfastly in Greek. And at last rising solemnly and fumbling in the huge pockets of his broad skirted drab. Hurt. To cut a bundle of tracks and selecting one entitled The Latter Day Coming. Or No Time to Lose. Placed it in Kwekwag's hands, and then grasping them and the book with both his, poked earnestly into his eyes, and said, Son of Darkness, I must do my duty by thee. I am part owner of this ship, and feel concerned for the souls of all its crew. If thou still congest to thy pagan ways, which I sadly fear, I beseech thee, remain not for I a belial bunchman. Spurn the idle bell and the hideous dragon. Turn from the wrath to come. Mind thine eye, I say. Oh. Goodness gracious. Steer clear of the fiery pit. Something of the salt sea yet lingered in old Bildad's language. Heterogeneously mixed with scriptural and domestic phrases. Aras there. Aras there. But it. Avas now spoiling our harpooner. Cried Pilek. Pious harpooners never make good wages, it takes the shark out of him. No harpooner is worth a straw, we ain't pretty sharkish. There was in that swing. Once the bravest boat header out of all Nantucket and the vineyard. He joined the meeting. And never came to good. He got so frightened about his plegisol. That he shrinked and sheared away from Wales. For fur of after cops. In case he got stove and went to Davy Jones. Pelag. Pelag. Said Bizet. Lifting his eyes and hands. Thou thyself. As I myself. He seen many a perilous time. Thou knowest, Ali, what it is to have the fear of death. How, then, canst thou prate in this ungodly guise? Thou beliest thine own heart, Thelaga. Tommy. When this same Pequotter had heard three masts overboard in that typhoon on Japan. That same voyage when thou went mate with Captain Ahab. Didst thou not think of death and the judgment then? Hear him. Hear him now. Cried Pilek. Marching across the cabin. And thrusting his hands far down into his pockets. Hear him. Wallavi. 
Think of that. When every moment we thought the ship would sink. Death and the judgment then? What? With all three masts making such an everlasting thundering against the side. And every sea breaking over us. Tore enough. Think of death and the judgment then. Darth. No time to think about death then. Life was what Captain Ahab and I was thinking of. And how to save our Chow to rig jury mass Chow to get into the nearest port. That was what I was thinking of. But Ed said no more. But buttoning up his coat. Stuck on deck. Where we followed him. There he stood. Very quietly overlooking some sailmakers who were mending a top sail in the waist. Now and then he stooped to pick up a patch. Or save an end of tarot twine. Which otherwise might have been wasted. To be continued.